So in the last video, we looked at the actual interference that a microwave can cause to your home's Wi-Fi. You're going from a, uh, your computer to your router or even like a wireless mic like what I was wearing or still am. Uh, and, uh, but I wanted to go a little bit deeper. So we realized that it definitely does have interference. But now we're going to go ahead and take a step back and look into some of the equipment that we used uh, and some of the software and just talk about the signals in general. In this video, we're gonna kind of extend on the topic that we talked about last time in terms of microwaves causing interference uh, with wireless devices, in particular, like your home Wi-Fi. Now, uh, in the first video, we actually looked at it, we turned the microwave on and we saw, absolutely, there's power that is coming out of the microwave. Uh, we haven't talked about how strong it is yet and we need to worry about it, but in terms of that signal can and operate at the same, does operate at the same frequency as your Wi-Fi. So before we go into the specifics of the microwave, I want to take a step back and actually look at something a little bit more familiar uh, in terms of signals and bandwidths and frequencies and stuff that you may not have even realized that you already know. And I'm talking just the basic broadcast FM band. Now this is, you know, what you're in your car, you're changing stations, 99.5, 100.7, whatever it is, you're operating and you're looking at wireless signals. Of course, you probably never even thought about it that much till now. So I'm going to go ahead and run my example here. And what we're actually looking at uh, in here is each one of these vertical lines that you're seeing on the screen is actually a different FM station. And actually the spectrum up top, every little peak that you see there, at least the significant ones, is a different station. And they are called their, their channels. And each channel has its own frequency that everything's operating at. Now, if somebody was going, driving past here, and they were listening to one of those very specific channels, and I, with my software-defined radio that I have here, which can transmit and receive, but if I turned it into transmit, and I transmitted at that same frequency, well, one, I'd be breaking the law, you're not allowed to do that. Uh, but in general, they would receive interference. They'd hear like static on the radio, or maybe my signal would override their signal. But in general, they wouldn't be getting the proper reception of what they had before. And so that same idea of what we are seeing here with, hey, these are the channels and this is the spectrum and these are the frequencies, the same thing applies to our wireless network in our house or Bluetooth devices or lots of other things that operate in this uh, 2.4 gigahertz ISM, Industrial Scientific and Medical Band. Uh, so let's go ahead and stop this for a moment because we're looking at the FM and now we're gonna go over and we're gonna go ahead and look at, say, my cell phone and those frequencies when it starts to, say, upload or stream a video out of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. I'm just gonna basically take my software to find radio and change the software on it. I'm gonna tell it to go to a new frequency. I'm gonna go 2.45, uh, actually, uh, yeah, two point, actually I think it's 2.41 uh, gigahertz that I'm tuning in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the antenna. This antenna is for looking at the FM spectrum and the one down here is actually for looking at the Wi-Fi. Um, and let's go ahead and change that over to zero. I'm gonna go ahead and run it again. And we're gonna see a very different spectrum come across, a lot closer to what uh, we saw previously with, uh, with the Wi-Fi. And so you can already see a couple blips coming up and very likely that is from my cell phone, just periodically, who knows what it's telling the world or the internet. But I'm just gonna go ahead and take the video that I've got right now. It's actually of a praying mantis fighting its own shadow <laughs> that I saw the other night. And I'm just gonna say, uh, no, don't create the link. Let's go ahead and uh, go back, share uh, to OneDrive, full video, and in just a moment, once it starts to upload, you're going to see quite a bit of uh, basically signal come across the spectrum. So what you can see here is there's a lot more power, a lot more signal being transmitted out uh, in this band. And this is a very specific channel in all of the Wi-Fi bands. So just like when we were looking at FM, where every station had its own channel, Wi-Fi has a, a pretty wide band. Now this just happens to be the specific channel that my cell phone is trying to talk to my router in. It's actually a tunable thing. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So if I were to actually go over to the 2.5 gigahertz band, uh, actually it's the 2.45 gigahertz band, you can see that there's still things transmitting uh, on the screen. Now that's not my cell phone, that's other things like say my wireless microphone that I'm wearing right now, smartwatch talking over Bluetooth. It could be almost anything. It's kind of, it's an unlicensed band. Anybody can transmit there up to some limits. But of course, if I go back to the microwave, 
it should show up a lot more once it really starts rocking and rolling and you're gonna see a lot more activity uh, on the spectrum itself. So now what you can see on the screen is that there's these little random red peaks that we're seeing all over the place here. And in fact, the whole spectrum's gotten a lot more noisy. And so really anywhere that one of those red peaks shows up that is clearly interference from the microwave actually has the ability to interfere with those specific channels along the way. So let's talk, uh, now that we know that why and how things kind of interfere, let's talk about microwaves and why are they even operating at this two point you know, Wi-Fi band, let's just call it that. What ends up happening is uh, the water molecules, interestingly enough, are like little magnets, kind of known as dipoles. And so there's a little bit of a polarity on them. There's a north and a south, if you will. And microwaves end up having to be electromagnetic waves. And so a magnet will respond to an electromagnetic wave, and it happens to be that uh, the microwave will cause the little water molecules to flip back and forth, just as if you were to hold two magnets together. And of course, when molecules rub against each other, they cause heat. Now, water molecules, uh, that's their unique nature. They're a little bit more fluid, obviously, by their nature, uh, and uh, they are that dipole. And so that's why if you just put a plate in your microwave, it really won't heat up that much as if you put like a jar of uh, water, like what we have here. So that's a, a big difference. And it's this sweet spot between frequencies of, hey, if it was a higher frequency, uh, it would just pass right through your food and it wouldn't get absorbed as much. And if it was a lower frequency, it would just actually go on the outside and it wouldn't cook the inside of the food. And so really this 2.45 gigahertz is a bit of a sweet spot that was chosen by the microwave designers a long time ago, well before Wi-Fi was in everybody's home. And it just happens to be that they're operating at the same frequency that what we all try to use our wireless devices at nowadays. And so that's actually a, a big part of that. Now, one of the things to note is that, well, how do we avoid some of this? Well, part of what ends up happening in modern routers is uh, not only are there, it's a wide enough band and microwaves, hopefully they're getting better and they're shielding themselves, but the uh, routers themselves have multiple bands that they can actually tune to, not only individual channels. So you saw that I was transmitting at one frequency, I had to retune my software to find radio to receive the other frequency. Well, uh, there's also a whole other band at five gigahertz that most new routers can operate in. And that one can completely avoid any interference or any possibility of interference from common devices like your microwave or other wireless devices that can also interfere uh, along the way there. So lastly, one of the things let's talk about is, is it safe to stand near the microwave or is my cell phone actually trying to microwave me? And the reality ends up being is if you were to say hug the microwave for like an hour straight <laughs> while it was running at full power, that would probably not be the most healthy thing to do because you are going to absorb a lot of that energy and indeed the water molecules in you will indeed be oscillating. But the reality is that the power that's inside the microwave, the real microwaving force, uh, is so much more like orders and orders and orders of magnitude more powerful than what you get even from uh, uh, say a few feet away. And so that's a, that's a big difference. And so in general, let's just go ahead and put it to bed. It is safe to walk, to be nearby, to even use your phones near your microwave. I'd say just go ahead and you know, keep your distance. You know, don't necessarily put your head up against it while it's running for long periods of time, which I don't think any of us should necessarily do. And of course, you've always got your tinfoil hat if you really wanna go for it. Now, in terms of, is my wireless device microwaving me? And the short answer is, well, yeah, it actually is, but the power levels are so much smaller. To give you an idea, this is, a, I think, a 700 watt uh, microwave. This is pretty small, pretty cheap, good for heating up some popcorns and coffee. And what ends up happening is your cell phone, if you think about uh, size, uh, if it's 700 from your microwave, what it is by the time that it gets to you is maybe about um, uh, um, one billionth of that level of power that you're actually absorbing by staying uh, at any reasonable distance. Even when you get close, it's way, way, way smaller than what's actually happening on the inside of the microwave. So that is what your cell phone gives out is about the same thing in terms of what uh, you get by standing a safe distance or a reasonable distance from the microwave. So you can take, uh, you know, Take your own choice in terms of whether or not you want your phone in your front pocket or your back pocket or you know, <laughs> wearing aluminum foil all over your body. It's up to you. you. You will be shielding yourself potentially a little bit from 
uh, radiation, but it's these exposure levels that are so low that you really don't need to worry about it. So thanks for joining me as we dig into wireless signals and how we experimented with our microwave and what the signals look like. So be sure to subscribe so you know when the next video comes out. Uh, in the description, we're going to go ahead and put uh, information and links to possibly the equipment that we use and maybe a little bit of the software. And uh, we'll be sure to see you next time for the next NI at home.